Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. I just wanted to show you uh, kind of an overlook of this past week. Uh, this is some footage of a uh, local farm community as they were out in a hurry trying to get as much of the crop off as they possibly could because there was forecast for rain for the rest of the week. And I thought it was kind of a neat thing um, that possibly a lot of you haven't seen before. So this is the view from inside the combine and uh, you can see how the grain is cut off and picked up and it's taken in through the combine. The seeds are separated from the, the seed head and the combine has a small storage space on it but as it fills they run alongside um, uh, another vehicle there that they can collect the, the grain in and they'll move that on yet you can see the the auger there, they can move that grain on yet into a semi before they, they haul it away. But So this is the view the farmer has from in the combine and then here's another guy out there in a hurry trying to get the crops off and everywhere you went this past weekend, um, this is what you were seeing around um, our area in rural Saskatchewan here as everybody was in a hurry to get their crops off. It wasn't just the farmers, I was trying to get as much as I could out too because heavy rains and cool weather don't do well for a lot of my uh, crops like tomatoes. As you've seen in some of my other videos, I've had a lot of trouble with my tomatoes splitting this year. So I took off anything that was showing any signs of ripening um, and uh, took it in the house and once it started to, to ripen on the vine there, it'll easily ripen in the house. So. That's what I did with all these tomatoes, and so I just went through the garden. I had zucchini, um, kale, uh, I think I pulled a few uh, ears of corn, some eggplant, had some peppers, but mostly I was after the tomatoes, so I went pretty thoroughly through the tomato plants. And of course my helper was out there as well. Some of the tomatoes you'll see every once in a while I, I give one a toss and I'm just throwing it over into my compost area because a few of them had damage from bugs or whatnot and, or had already split um, and maybe I hadn't caught them last time they'd split if they're in the middle of a, a plant so just get rid of them if that happens. If they're really bad. Some of them were actually buggy and moldy. If it's just a little bit then you can cut that out. But. Now there's turnips in front of this tomato plant here and uh, my tomato plants this year just refuse to stay on their stakes so they're all just kind of all over the place but it looks like I'm pulling out of something else but it's really a tomato plant in behind the, the turnip there. Tomatoes, I, they haven't been really flowering anymore, but they were so full that they're just, uh, they're still producing quite well for me. I'm still getting quite a few tomatoes, so I've gotten quite a few batches of salsa and tomato sauce um, and just eaten a lot fresh. And I think I've frozen a few whole as well, so I've had a a fairly decent crop, not as good as um, some years, but it's been quite cool this year and, and I've been pretty happy with what I've gotten off of these plants. You may have noticed I set one tomato there, I put a, a piece of wood there and I set one up on the wood and that's just because it hasn't started to ripen yet, but it was laying right in a kind of a muddy spot, so I just tried to lift it up out of the mud. My uh, tomato basket kept falling over, so I moved it over to this table here just to try and collect some of the harvest here. Oh yeah, I got some celery there too. I gave one one big plant of celery to my mom that same weekend and I took one and I still have one out in the garden. I've been eating off of them, cutting as I, as I want some for a while, but I took some and just froze it. Um, so chopped it all up, leaves, stems and everything, and just froze it. 
so I'll have lots throughout the winter. And then I had some more tomato pot, uh, plants over in the big pots over um, in the other part of the yard, so, and some little cherry tomatoes. And you can see I didn't bother setting those down, I just kept snacking on them as I picked them. And I'm not even sure that handful made it into the house later on, but that's those chocolate sprinkles, cherry tomatoes, they're quite yummy. And then of course I have my few little uh, containers of edibles up on the, the deck, so I popped as many of the cherry tomatoes off of those as I could. Had a peek at the eggplant. I've gotten a few little baby eggplants off of that little patio eggplant, but there weren't any to collect that day, so but I had lots of cherry tomatoes. So you can see it's just loaded there. So I took those and added that to the harvest. So there's some tomato sauce I made out of uh, the ripe tomatoes that I collected that day and some that I had in the house already. Five jars, they'll go in the freezer. And then this is just some really neat footage. Um, there's a museum near us called the Sukunin Museum. And every year they, throw, they hold a threshing bee and they get out the old threshing machine from back uh, many years ago. This is what the farmers used to use. They'd go and collect the, the grain up into a wagon like this and the guys would have to throw it into the machine and the big crews would come around with these threshing machines. Every farm didn't have one. The crews would come around and they would thresh the, the grain for you and then you see it separates the wheat from the chaff or whatever grain you have I guess and spits the chaff out in a big pile and then sends the grain into the truck there waiting to collect it. Pretty special. This um, thresher here is actually being powered, you saw right at the beginning of this shot here, by a steam engine that uh, my cousin, oh there it is, my cousin and his daughter and I think his brother helped a little bit, they rebuilt, he has two of those big old steam engines so they bring them out to the museum and along with a lot of other equipment and uh, show it off that weekend and let everybody have a little taste of the past. So. Suganin Ship Museum is a uh, a great place to visit. Now this is just, I took a little bit of footage every day this week as the rains came just so you could get a taste of what we were enjoying. Now nothing like those of you that have been experiencing uh, hurricane weather but a lot of rain fell this week so every day I took a little shot of the rain gauge. I never dumped it out all week so these are cumulative amounts here as you can see. So this was Monday afternoon and uh, it was about three quarters of an inch or about 18 millimeters by mid-afternoon on Monday. Things are already looking pretty soaked by then. This is Tuesday afternoon. You can see my little pool there is filled up. And uh, yeah, it's wet out there. It was cold too. I think we were around, um, I think the highest we got was about 12 degrees Celsius all week. So by Tuesday afternoon we had accumulated looks like around two and a quarter inches or around 56 mils somewhere in there. It's just a little shot of the wet plants there, some a dill seed head. Now this was Wednesday afternoon. See, I'd started to put some of the covers over some more things by then. 
water was just laying. That's pumpkin vines laying in water between the raised beds. You can see um, how great the raised beds are when we do get the rain like this. This clay, the, the water just does the soak into the clay very quickly. It takes time. So here's Wednesday's uh, accumulation, which is about two and three quarter inches or 70 mils. And then this is uh, Thursday morning, about three inches, about 76 millimeters. Cleared off for a little bit Thursday night, but then it rained again over overnight, late in the evening, and by Friday morning, we had about three and an eighth inches or 80 mils. So we got a good amount of rain over the week, and then the sun came out, and we're happy to have it. Thanks for watching. Bye.